In the name of the one holy and living God. Amen. Today's reading is a welcome message, at least for me, at least right now. With fears of the pandemic and questions about exactly what challenges our fall and winter might hold, and concerns about the election, the economy, and most of all, the almost palpable tension among those in our country right now of different political parties. Well, I don't know about you, but I am eager to have some comforting words. And these words of Jesus this morning are about as comforting as they come. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You should know that the heavy burdens that Jesus is referring to have to do with the law. More specifically, the religious laws that are outlined in the Torah. Not just the Ten Commandments, of course, but the 248 positive laws that are written into scripture, the you shalls, as well as the 365 negative laws, the you shall nots. These laws were meant to so infuse daily life with a sense of reverence and connection with the holy as to erase the separation between God and human beings in our everyday life. But in reality, the adherence to the laws became a chore at best, and at worst, they distracted from the real intention of those practices. It's much like celibacy in the Roman Catholic Church today. A religious requirement of celibacy has the intention of reinforcing this basic idea that we should not place any relationship in our lives ahead of our relationship with God. But because of the limitation of human beings and human institutions, that very noble religious ideal can be easily corrupted into a preoccupation with sexual behavior. That is, in short, what Jesus' critique of the religious legal requirements of the Judaism of his day were. Instead of principles that pointed the faithful toward behavior that honored God, they had become empty and burdensome religious requirements that actually stood in the way of people's relationship with God. And if nothing else, Jesus wanted all of us to have a robust relationship with God and to understand that relationship not as a legal requirement or burden, but rather in terms that he most often describes as that of a parent and child. To imagine God as close as Abba, our father. Papa might even be a better translation of the word Abba that Jesus uses so often to describe his relationship with God. To use the image of father and child in this ancient context was to make it clear that this relationship was both loving and nurturing, but also pointed toward the sharing of power and property that would have been understood between a father and son in the ancient world. A child was extraordinarily valuable 
because the Father's land would one day be his, because the Father's responsibilities would inevitably be shared with his children, and because one day the Father would depend upon the work and judgment of his children for his own safety and security, as well as the continuation of his own property. And so we too are understood to have the yoke of responsibility because our inheritance in, within God is both his unconditional love and also stewardship of this world. It is our joy to share in the work of God's kingdom, in God's justice, because we know that we are not carrying the burden alone, but are supported by fellow people of faith and guided by God's loving purpose for our world. Here's what I mean. A priest once went to Africa to do missionary work. And while he was there, it took him nearly three years to learn Swahili. He had already been working in a small village for almost a year by the time that he could finally communicate to his community. They were finally able to understand him, but one of the villagers came up to him afterwards and said, Father, we thank you for all the sacrifices you've made to preach to us in Swahili, but you don't understand God the way we do. You speak of God as out there in the universe, but for us, God is like a tiger and we are the prey. Not only does he hunt us down, but we are captured by him and baptism puts the seal on this capture. We are held by him and he owns us. So there isn't any great difficulty in reaching him he is the one who seizes us. The priest later said that he learned more theology from that single conversation than he had learned during his time in seminary. It's just a way of looking at God, which is more meaningful in some ways than some kind of vague, distant God in whom we have faith. We are owned by God. Once you have the faith to know that the Lord will sustain you and keep you and hold you and protect you, worries diminish because faith in the one who is constantly looking for you becomes the underpinning of support in your life. A friend of mine who is both a therapist and an Episcopal priest once told me that there was no accident that dog is God spelled backwards. St. Francis, I am sure, would agree. He was a brilliant theologian and a saint who understood that sometimes it is hard for us to accept the unconditional love and constancy of God. He believed that it was in the natural world, in animals in particular, that we could best conceive of God's love for us. And those of us who are blessed to have the presence of animal companions or fur babies know this to be true. The steady love of a dog or a horse, the comforting presence of a cat, the companionship of a bird, or even the frantic dance of baby chicks, swimming fish, sheep chewing hay. They remind us that God's presence is all around us, supporting and sustaining all living things, a source of unconditional love. And if our God has taken so much care with these animals, how much more will he lovingly protect us? 
After all, we are God's very own children, made in the image of God, chosen by him to be co-creators of justice in this world, to be agents of love and protectors of the animals and the creatures and the planet given to our care in our day. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen.